Hey everybody, Jake Reichbart here. Today I'm going to share with you a lengthy lesson excerpt. So have your guitars ready and we're going to have some fun together arranging a song. Perhaps you've seen some of my many hundreds of solo guitar arrangements I have here on YouTube. And the inspiration for these arrangements is right here behind me as you can see. I grew up with this with these vinyls and uh, I draw pretty much from any kind of style imaginable from the pop music of the past hundred years. Everything from Glenn Miller to Van Halen, Alan Holdsworth to Motown, and pretty much anything in between. Beatles, I have perhaps uh, 25 Beatles song arrangements, 20 Steely Dan song arrangements, same for uh, Stevie Wonder, rock, hard rock, D Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and of course tons and tons of classic jazz standards from the 40s and 50s, bebop, dance tunes, movie themes. And if you want to learn how to arrange any of these songs for solo guitar, I can teach you. Just like the excerpt that you're about to watch, which comes from a lesson that runs about 90 minutes, I have nearly 200 additional titles and they are mostly song specific. I enjoy teaching through specific songs because I can show you hands-on how I approach arranging a song. What's nice about these lessons is that I don't just tell you do this and you're done, but rather I'll take you through three or four or five different ways to play the same passage. I'll work with you on dynamics, on articulation, and a hundred other things that you cannot just put to paper. As I mentioned, these lessons run approximately 90 minutes. The introduction, which runs usually 15 minutes, focuses on the right hand and rhythm. And in this introduction, I go through my three pillars of rhythmic arranging. The first principle being melody and bass only. The second being rhythmic arpeggiation. And the third, of course, the down stroke that I play with my right hand fingernails to produce that backbeat that everybody asks me about. Nevertheless, I do have two main method lessons. The first one, how to arrange any song for solo guitar running two hours, and also an introduction to fingerstyle guitar and solo guitar arranging running two hours and 40 minutes. The information about these lessons, the cost, my full lesson list, as well as a link to the full performance of the song that we're working on today is below in the information. So expand the information, take a look, and let's get started. The original recording, of course, starts with a percussion and drum. I make no reference to that uh, with, the, with the guitar, with my arrangement. I start pretty much with the famous. So what I will do now is proceed to show you those three voicings. For the most part, two of them are pretty static. You play the notes. And the third one has some movement in it. We'll show you what those are. So to start with, we start with an A chord in the open position. Play the open A bass note along with E, A, and C sharp on strings four, three, and two in the on the second fret. And I use one finger to, to cover those. And since the high note of that chord is in fact the C sharp. I avoid anything on the on the open E string. So that's another reason I'm using a finger here because this finger also acts as a mute for the first string. And there's nothing else nothing else will make a sound. Of course you need to avoid playing anything on the bottom string. The second voicing is in the same region, and out of the four notes, two actually stay the same. That would be the A bass note, as well as the E on the fourth string, second fret. However, the A note on the third string becomes a G sharp, and the C sharp on the second string becomes a B. You open it, so... I, and you can use, of course, any finger for this purpose. The first one seems the most convenient. So that second voicing, put together, the notes are A, E, G sharp, and B. And of course, what it means musically is you have an E 
triad over a an A bass note. After you play this chord, the next chord is going to be a C sharp minor seven, but in order to achieve somewhat something that resembles what the keyboards play in the original recording, I came up with a different voicing. The part that I play, the notes that I play, do not reflect reflect exactly what's going on on the record. It's simply a guitar approximation, something that will resemble and give the listener a, an approximate effect of what happens on the original recording. So my version of this is to play the C sharp on the f on the fifth string fourth fret with my third finger E on the fourth string second fret with my f first finger actually I take that back as you will see in a moment we actually have to do it with the second finger for just for showing purposes I was using my first finger but in reality we're gonna have to use these three fingers so C sharp with the third finger E with the second finger and on the third string I play a B with my pinky it's a little bit of a kind of a weird stretch between these especially between fingers two and three so I have to spend some time with that and then the remaining notes are the open B and E so put together you have a C sharp E B another B and E and the reason it works for me and the reason I'm fingering it in this weird way is because I have my first finger now available to do a little movement I do this hammer-on action where I hammer from the E to F sharp and back and same it's on the second fret and the same type of motion on the second string between the open B and the C sharp. So you're always doing back and forth motion you're doing it twice on the second string and once on the first string and repeat the notes you're hearing there's like a gap in the notes those will be plucked out with the right hand so together it sounds like this probably the most difficult fingering and position and movement of the whole song so if you're having difficulties right now don't despair because everything after this is there's stuff to remember but it's not I don't think anything is as as difficult as this particular motion for the rest of the song so so bear with me work on this and we'll get through it putting it together I'll do it without the backbeat for now it's hard for me to avoid the backbeat at this stage I, it's uh, for me it's so uh, built into what I do so uh, forgive me for that play it in time now 
Now the rhythm is important here. One, two. See this? When I hit that chord, it's not the downbeat of the next measure. That comes later, and I mark it with an extra bass note. This is actually, when I hit this chord, it's actually beat number th uh, four of the previous measure. my hand so you can see the right hand a little bit better. start with the melody of the verse. <laughs> 